Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning and uh, welcome to this morning's class. We'll continue with our subject on um, faith. How about uh, one of us lead in prayer this morning? Maybe one of the ladies, if the mic can be passed on this side, and they could lead us in prayer, and then we'll go ahead. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you for this day, for this time, Father. Father, as we're going to learn about faith, Father, we ask for your wisdom. We ask for your understanding, Father. Father, I pray that you speak through Pastor Nancy, whatever we need, Father, in faith, Father, to walk in faith, Father, you impart through her in our lives, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this day. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you. Um, We'll move right ahead in the last class. We began with chapter 4, and we were looking at a couple of things. First, we discussed about truth versus facts, how facts can be quite different from what the truth of God's word says. But as we hold on and trust God for the manifestation of his promises, the facts will catch up with the truth. But we must never preach the truth on the basis of our experience. Or in other words, we said, don't bring down the truth to the level of your experience. So that is something we looked at. And then we discussed about, we, this is all about um, what we can learn from the teachings of Jesus on the subject of faith. So the first thing we learned is all things are possible with God because God is outside of time. God is all powerful. He's almighty. So there is really nothing that, uh, you know, our Lord God, uh, is there anything too hard for you? As we look at the Old Testament scriptures, that's what we learn. There's nothing that is difficult for God because uh, he's able in every sense, he's able to do uh, the, you know, the impossible for those who trust in him. So that's what we saw. So for with God, all things are possible. When we reach um, limitations in our lives, when we may be facing walls in our lives, as we are learning about God, we recognize that those limitations don't have to define what we receive from God, isn't it? So that's the point, because we have to apply this. Knowing that all things are possible with God, how are you uh, and I going to apply it in our lives? So whenever we are facing any difficulty, maybe it's a challenge in our studies, it's a challenge in our work, it's a challenge in our ministry, challenge in our family life, we don't stop with what the circumstances say. Instead, we depend on God and we know, hey, God, Everything is possible with you. So though it seems like I cannot move further, I'm putting my faith in you, you make a way. Even though this may seem like the end, you make a way out of this. And we know that our God will do the impossible. So that's how we apply. So faith says, this is not the end. It's not over. It's still possible. All things are possible with God. So that is the first thing we learned. Okay. Don't don't accept defeat, failure, uh, and uh, stop there. Instead, put our faith in God and believe in Him. Second, second point, we will receive according to our faith. According to our faith. We will learn later on that there is something known as a measure of faith. Measure of faith. So depending on the capacity of the faith that we carry, we receive miracles, healings, or whatever it is from the Lord. So depending on our faith, the measure of our faith. You know, when we go to a, a, a grocery store and we want to buy something, we generally share how much of that substance or thing we want you know if you're buying rice we say okay give me 100 grams give me 
five hundred grams. Give me one kg. Give me, you know, different different measures of rice. So what God is trying to tell us is, according to our faith, how small or great our faith is, depending on that we are going to receive, and how much our faith is believing God for. Depending on that, we are going to receive from the Lord. All right. So let's look at a couple of scriptures, and it will be clearer. Matthew eight, verse thirteen. This is um, this is regarding the centurion, isn't it? Let me just quickly check that out. Yes. So verse 13 here, um, that's when Jesus has spoken the powerful word to the centurion and instructed him saying, go your way uh, and as you have believed, as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And what did the centurion believe? What did he believe? It's there in the following part. Hmm? Yeah, servant will be healed. He believed that. But notice the very next line that says, and his servant was healed that same hour. So that tells us something about the kind of faith that the centurion carried. He could have believed that the word of Jesus will manif manifest its power in a couple of hours, or the next day, or in a few days, or that the, the servant will be healed but not fully. See, there could have been all kinds of things that the centurion could have believed for. What did Jesus say? So let it be done for you. As you have believed, so let it be done for you. And it was done for him. What did he believe? He believed, my servant will be well right now. That was his faith. So great was his faith. We know Jesus was very happy with the faith. In the beginning itself, he says, oh, I've not seen this kind of faith. Because he believed like that. So what does this tell us? It tells us God will do, but what God does is based on our faith. Now if God gives us a vision, you know, a huge vision and says, hey, I'm going to work through your life to impact um, the nation and the nations. And we are listening to what God is saying and we say, oh God, it's too much. That's not, I am not able to, Accept that. Maybe you can impact, you know, my state and a few other states. I believe that much. Okay. That is how much I believe. Not the nation and the nations. So if Jesus says, okay, so shall it be according to what you have believed. So ultimately, we end up impacting a smaller portion as compared to what God intended. So if I can believe that, yes, God, I can. When you're saying it, it is possible. I believe it. So if my faith is that, yeah, I God can work through my life to make me a blessing the way he has spoken to the nation and the nations, it will happen. But if I'm not able to believe, how much ever I believe, that's as much as I'm going to receive. So did we all get the picture? That's the point here. First, we said, Believe God for the impossible because he can do the impossible. Second, what we are saying is, according to our faith, how much am I believing God for? Only that much God can work. He's able to do more than that, but my faith is limiting him. So, there is a responsibility on our part to work on our faith level. And we can ask ourselves the question, how much 
how much do I believe God? You know, do I believe that uh, he's able to take me through this season? Do I believe that the vision that he has given me, uh, he will fulfill no matter how difficult it seems at this point in my life? So as much as you and I can believe, so much God can do for us. You know, it's somewhat like we uh, looked at the example of rice. Okay. Now imagine there is a heap of rice uh, and you can go and take how much ever you want. It depends on the vessel that you and I carry. Now if I have, I have a, um, you know, a container that can hold only 500 grams of rice, I'll get only 500 grams of rice. Now, if I have a container that can hold two kgs of rice, I'll get two kgs of rice. So in the same way, what Jesus is saying, according to your faith, I'm willing. I have resources. But as much as you can believe. That day, the centurion believed, my servant can be healed right now, this very moment. That's why he told Jesus, Lord, you only say a word and my servant will be healed. And he believed that it will take immediate effect. And so that's exactly what happened. So let's just read that scripture one more time. All right. So uh, Matthew 8 verse 13, then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. So God wants to do, God will do, but it also depends on the capacity of our faith. And there are many such examples in the Bible. There's another one given here in our notes about the healing of the blind man. Matthew 9 verse 29. Could somebody read it aloud, please? Blind men. And he tells their eyes, saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. Amen. So how much do we believe? In other words, how much is our expectation from God? If we don't have any expectation from God, it's not God's fault that I'm not seeing the manifestation of God's power in my life. Because according to your faith, as you have believed, those are Jesus' statements. According to your faith, as you have believed. So how much did I believe? How much did I go to God with my expectation? Am I believing that, you know, God can bless my life? God can uh, bless my uh, future? God can bless the work of my hands? God can give me favor? God can strengthen me from every side? God can heal me physically? No, God can give me thriving relationships. God can give me understanding, wisdom. Do I believe these things? If I am believing these things according to my faith, I'll keep receiving and then, you know, keep moving forward. The same way when I'm praying for someone, how much can I believe for that person? Do I believe that, okay, they'll be fine, but not, not fully? So then I just pray, okay, God, you know, remove, remove uh, this discomfort. I may not pray, Lord, make them fully whole because I'm not able to believe. So as much as our faith, that is the extent to which we can receive from God. So what is our expectation? It's important through the journey of our faith walk that we keep increasing our faith, keep increasing our faith. Sometimes it is a good exercise to just sit down when nobody is there, take a piece of paper, Ask yourself these questions, you know, whatever I said. Do I believe God that he will bless my life? Do I believe God that, uh, you know, he will, again, whatever is important to you, that there will be peace and prosperity in my family, uh, my body will be healed. These are honest questions we can ask. Now, if the answer is no, then we have to work on building our faith. Because another good news is whatever measure of faith God has given us, it need not remain the same. When Paul writes to the Thessalonians, he writes saying, your faith grows exceedingly, which means faith 
can multiply. So if I can increase my faith, I can receive that much more from God. So expectation, faith. How is my capacity? Depending on my capacity, God will release. So what is what is limiting God, you know, as, as far as um, this is concerned? My faith. God can do so much, but he's limited by how much I can believe. So why not I increase my capacity to believe him for more? And then I will receive more from the Lord. Okay, I'm going on being reminded of uh, uh, Cain and Abel. You all remember? So back when they made the sacrifices to God, Abel believed that God would accept. Cain, he didn't. His sacrifice was not accepted. How do we know? How do we know? Because when we look at the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by faith, Abel, by faith, Abel. So what was the difference between the sacrifices that God noticed? Abel made it by faith. That's why it was accepted. Cain, he probably didn't have faith, but he still he was making sacrifices. God didn't find faith in Cain's sacrifice. right? So according to your faith. So at that point, maybe Abel uh, knew that God is going to be pleased. He went ahead with faith, expectation that my sacrifice is blessed. Now, it was not required that God would accept only one brother's sacrifice, right? What could have happened is God could have accepted both of their sacrifices. It could have happened. However, there was one person with faith and expectation. The other person limited God, which is why God couldn't, even if he wished to. So faith becomes the limiting factor. But the ball is in our court. We can work on our faith, increase in our faith, and keep believing God for more and more. And set the expectation higher and higher and say, yes, God, I believe. Yes, God, I believe. You know, And then you just keep receiving more from the Lord. So we need to work on our faith because it's quite clear that what we receive is according to our faith. As your faith so shall it, so let it be. So that is about the capacity of our faith. So if there are any questions, please um, you know, ask. If not, I'll keep moving on to the next topic here. The third one, it states, our will and desire is involved in the exercise of faith. Now, one of us asked the other day, uh, what about my desire? You know, will if does God do things only according to His will and desire? What about my desire? Okay, will God do the opposite of our desire? Is that the you know spiritual way in which God works? But when we look at the instances in the Gospels, we notice that. Jesus was looking for the desire of the people. How much do you want what you are asking for? Do you really desire, do you strongly desire what you are seeking for? So that was something that Jesus was looking for. Look at this, Matthew chapter 15 and verse 28. Could someone read it please? It's in our notes. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So as we can notice here, there was a woman who came to Jesus. And yesterday, or the last class, we talked about how she was outside of the covenant. And yet Jesus did a miracle for her because her faith was so great. Based on faith, God moved the boundaries. A woman who's outside the covenant, he gave her a miracle. So 
her faith was very great but what was a part of her faith desire desire this is also important for us we must come to a place where we desire to receive from the lord that's a part of our you know healthy christian walk when we desire so this woman she had uh, her daughter who was oppressed we don't know the details of you know wh what was going on but she was very uh, very greatly oppressed and she wanted deliverance for her daughter how much did she want it how much do you think she wanted it really bad yeah a lot she wanted it a lot how do we know we talked about it we said when she came to jesus and she said um lord you know you heal my daughter and jesus said we don't we cannot give the children's bread to the dogs it's it's an insult actually that would mean jesus is saying she, uh, it, it's almost like equating her to the dogs you and i at that point what would we do get so angry we like i don't want i i'll go somewhere else see how he's talking that could have been our response but she knew jesus very well and she probably understood what he was trying to say also that you're outside the covenant but she wanted it real bad okay we know that because she didn't budge she was begging further she said lord even the dogs eat the crumbs so she's understanding who jesus is she knows what she wants and she wants it badly what's the point of her statement i don't care what you say i want deliverance for my child i will take it and i will go that is what i'm here for no matter what you say i've come to get what i want so does it show strong desire very strong right she is desiring to see her daughter made whole if this jesus has delivered so many people he can surely deliver my daughter that's the faith that she carried and her desire is strong it's very very strong and look at this jesus actually comments on her desire verse 28 of matthew 15 let it be to you as you desire as you desire so desire it's it's uh, you know we may call it an emotion we may call it a uh, um, sense of expectation um, in us but we can let god use our desires in a proper way in a positive way and we can say god i give you my desires you know i give you my appetites i give you my desires you guide and lead oh god so god can put godly desires in our hearts and those are the desires with which we go to god you know a strong desire to grow in the lord a strong desire to seek his presence a strong desire to see a revival and god likes it you know god likes it if you go look at uh, places like uh, isaiah 44 god says i will pour out waters on him who is thirsty it's like being thirsty you when we are um very thirsty we desire water isn't it we desire it strongly we are looking for water if only i can get a sip of water uh you know i'll be satisfied that's the way to strongly desire you're going after that even if i get a little that's what i want so desiring after god hungering after god you know these are all the right appetites and in the same way knowing what god can do and desiring to have jesus do that for us in our lives god likes it and he wants us to have that kind of desire towards him there's nothing wrong when we have godly desires and we say god 
these are my desires i want to live for you this is what i want my future to look like this is how blessed i want my family to be or you know myself to be my church to be godly desires godly desires and we go to god with it and see how jesus responds whatever you desire let it be to you as you desire what do you desire god uses our desires nothing wrong with desire right it's a healthy thing it's a healthy thing um, but our desires and appetites must be aligned to the word of god we are not asking for any ungodly thing so then it's fine desire is necessary as we approach god in faith now there are a few more examples given here uh, mark 10 verse 51 52 could someone read it please try to pass the mic around as often as possible so that different ones of you take turns okay we'll keep us alert and um, also provide opportunity for everyone so mark, mark 10 51 to 52 so jesus answered and said to him what do you want me to do for you hmm. the blind man said to him rabboni that i may receive my sight yes then jesus said to him go your way your faith has made you well and immediately he received his sight and followed jesus on the road mm. yes so here is a blind man who is approaching the lord jesus for a healing when a blind man comes to jesus um all right so the whole scene is there that he's crying out to jesus and then uh, you know he comes up to jesus and those days you know they would have worn a garment to show that they are not um, you know he had a garment on and he would, he just threw that garment out to come up to the lord so the point is as he approached jesus and as he was brought to jesus do we feel like jesus understood what his problem was what do you think yeah it would have been obvious they brought him to jesus he was crying out to jesus they brought him to jesus jesus would have looked at him and uh, seen that he is blind so does jesus know that he is blind he knows and yet he is asking this man the question what do you want me to do for you what do you think he may have wanted it's interesting why jesus is asking because he is checking the desire he is checking the uh, faith do you believe that i can do this for you so that's the point and so jesus is asking this man and he is expressing his faith in jesus in verse 51 he says raboni that i may have my sight and jesus says go your way your faith has made you well and immediately he received his sight and followed jesus on the road again jesus is commenting on his faith and his expectation his expectation is i want my sight back and obviously he believed that he'll have his complete vision back and he got it what if he didn't believe that he would have his complete vision back that he will be able to see a little bit and the bible would have said he was able to see a little bit but thank god according to his faith his faith was to receive complete wholeness so as per the man's desire that's why jesus is asking what do you want so this morning we could say what are our prayers before the lord we generally do that right whatever is our desire we keep saying god please help me please make a way please bless me or you know please god do this do this what are our desires as long as we can believe god to do those things as he has promised in his word we will see a manifestation so our desires are crucial they are important while teaching about prayer um jesus said whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them so there are things that we are believing god for and our desire should be for those things in our lives um john 15 verse 7 
if you abide in me my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you now some people ask the question they say um what if my desire is opposite to god's will then how can i go to god with my desire it's not right isn't it i may be desiring something far away from the will of god then what happens well john chapter 15 is telling us that when we abide in god abide in god is to live or to dwell or to constantly be connected to god when we talk about the vine and its branches we we looked at this the branches connected into the vine so there's no question of disconnection if we break off you know we have some plants say you break off one one branch throw it it will dry up it will dry up and die but as long as it is connected to the life giving source which is that main trunk from where it's receiving its nourishment and strength it will still you know thrive so that's the way our relationship with god should be every believer not just the pastors and leaders but every believer you know having a prayer life practicing the presence of god being in the word of god all of that shows that we are connected so when we are connected that's what john you know 157 if you abide abide is stay connected at all times stay connected and my words abide in you that means that you and i are so much in the word of god that the word of god is in our hearts the word of god is in our minds the word of god is in our mouth we are obeying the word of god the word of god is becoming a part of who we are so if we are living like that then you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you so there is something that comes before the desire what is that being connected to god having the word in our lives then what happens is the word of god starts to influence our desires okay so that's how the shift or the change happens and we don't have to be afraid and say oh what if i desire something which is not in god's will as long as we are in the word of god the word of god will shape or guide uh, or direct our desires we don't have to be afraid sometimes god puts godly desires in our hearts Now, some of us are here in the bible college uh, you know many are connecting online i'm sure at some point in your lives there was a desire i want to go to bible college you know i want to study god's word wasn't it just a desire then how did you how did you uh, follow through it's a desire right should we go by desire is it godly yes there are many things that god will lead us through a desire it may be a simple desire i want to learn music or you know i want to um uh, i want to sharpen my skill in this area or um, i want to go something uh, go somewhere i want to do something for the poor people i want to do something for the elderly folk i want to do something for the women right it's a small desire it's a spark in my heart i want to do some day i'm going to do this some day i'm going to build this but that's how god works you got it and he's looking he's asking he's checking what do you desire because that shows our faith so as we are connected with the lord as his word is in our hearts we can expect god to start putting desires godly desires in our hearts and we start desiring we start saying yes god i dream you know we have pictures of all these mighty men and women here in the bible college many of them they desired you know evan roberts we must uh, study about him he was a young man like um, you know one of you all during his bible college break he went back home and at that time someone came to preach and they preached uh, and left but it impacted him so much 
that he started praying and he called uh, you know a few others also started joining him for prayer and his desire was to experience more of god that was his desire so he started praying 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 a lot and then we read about how the welsh revival broke through it was one man who desired for more of god and something happened to the entire city you know we read about many many things that happened in wales once uh, the holy spirit started moving powerfully in that place but how does god do it it may start with a desire one desire a godly desire in our hearts through which god is guiding us and directing us and when we come to god in prayer we can come with those expectations and the way jesus is asking what do you want what is your desire what are you looking for what is your hope what are you hungering for what are you thirsting for we say god i desire more of your word in my life i desire that you will give a breakthrough as far as my health is concerned lord i desire desire is important as we desire whatever as long as we are connected strongly to the lord the word is in our hearts you will ask what you desire by that time our desires are influenced by the word of god you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you and you know many times god wants that intense desire so uh, i i think i mentioned about one a church planter you know a pastor who got a word from god that his church is going to be one of the largest churches and when he started uh his ministry there were just like three people five people in the church but he talks about how he desired what god wanted for him so he was thinking about the church growth he was praying about the church growth you know as he was waking as he was sleeping all he could think of was oh my church is going to be you know i'm going to be a blessing uh, my church is going to be a blessing god's going to bring in faithful people god is going to grow this church and he desired and desired and desired in other words it was a burning desire it was not like yeah it would be nice you know if, if god would help me serve in the ministry it would be nice and then you forget about it that's not passion that's not like being stirred that's not a burning desire but what god wants is when we say i have faith he wants us to come to a place of that burning desire you know god i desire your presence i desire your word okay i desire to serve you it's burning it's burning in our hearts and our expectation is there yes jesus you will do it for me and when we approach the lord like that he says whatever you desire it shall be done for you okay so desire is good desire is from the lord when we yield to him uh, and he responds because it is connected to our faith now some people say that you know we we can just be very general we can just say god you know your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and god knows what are the specifics to that so he'll take care of it while that is true it's like saying i'll just let god um, you know i'll put the responsibility on god i'm not going to seek him hard uh, and um, you know i'm not going to wait for him to put things in my heart right so we don't have to live life like that where we don't know what god wants we can know what god wants and we can specifically desire for those things seek him for those things a pray and receive from him and now again we've said many things about knowing god's word and uh, um you know asking on the basis of his word we are not saying be random don't be random like uh, i desire this and i desire that not randomly but as per his will and he will do it for us uh, so instead of you know being very general and saying yeah if god wants to do he'll do if he wants me to be there he'll put me there that's a passive approach that's a passive approach uh instead our approach generally must be 
to hear from the Lord and passionately go after it. So that would be the best approach. All right. Um, So if it be thy will, again, if it be thy will uh, is something that Jesus prayed in God, the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, but we know that he prayed such a prayer only once, as if to give God the responsibility. OK. However, that's a different situation. We know exactly what was going on at that time. And uh, finally, he gave in to God's will and said, OK, Lord, you know, I'll do what you have called me to do. So it was only once that Jesus said, if it be thy will. So the point is, in our lives, to have a prayer life where we don't have clarity and we're always saying, whatever God wants, if it's your will, God, you know, very passive kind of uh, a walk with God. That as we're looking at faith, that's not how people approach Jesus. They approached him specifically. Uh, and, you know, with, with desire, with expectation, and they had faith. And according to that faith, according to the desire, they received. So if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. All right, so let's move on. The fourth point here. Faith is key to seeing God's glory manifested. John 11, verse 40. This is, these are the words of um, Jesus to uh, Martha. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So when God wants to manifest his power, he firstly wants us to carry faith. Faith is the key to see God's glory manifest. And so no matter what the situation, according to whatever God has spoken, when we believe God, what is the glory of God? Glory of God is who God is, his nature. So in God's nature, we know he is a good God. He's a gracious God. He is a just God. He is a healer. Many things about the nature of God and what God does. God's power. He can do miracles. So when we say the glory of God, it means God is showing up. God is showing himself in that situation. So when a miracle happens, usually we say, wow, you know, God is so good. Like water turned into wine. It shows God is so kind, generous. And um, the power of God can even turn back time in a sense. Right now, the water became wine. Got it. So God is showing himself. That is the glory of God. Go God is, in other words, showing off himself. But if we want God to show up like that, we need to have faith. Without faith, it's not possible to see God showing up in a situation. So there's this man by the name of uh, George uh, Mueller. I don't know how you pronounce his second name correctly, but uh, you can read about him. And he had a desire in his heart to take care of uh, um, you know, the underprivileged uh, children. So he had a children's home, uh, and uh, you know, he was taking care of them. But he also had a desire that he will never ask for support, never ask for support, never ask for money. How can you run a home without people giving? He, he desi decided he will not ask, but you know God will provide. That's how he ran that ministry. And it's a powerful uh, life testimony if you read about him. And at one point, uh, there was no food. There was no food, there was no milk. And that day, uh, as you know, George Miller was believing God, he was praying and he was saying, Lord, I don't know how, but I know that in this situation, like you can show your, yourself strong. There is nothing. What am I going to feed the children? 
okay and the story goes on that uh, somebody there was a delivery truck with the milk and the bread or, or something like that and as it was passing by um, that place it broke down near this this home and the the person who was driving he came up to the door he knocked and he said you know what we can't get this vehicle out of here and there's uh, milk and other things it makes more sense if you can use it and you know that that's what happened that day can you imagine a vehicle comes and it crashes right in front of your door and people say whatever you want you take it and that's exactly what he needed he needed meal for the children and god did a miracle so god's miracles are like that they show off the glory of god it was as if god was saying i am gracious i am your provider i am jehova jaira you know but look at this this was the faith of george miller he said god you called me for this ministry you will take it forward every day every day uh, usually people talk about him as a man of prayer how he prayed believed god believed god believed god and the work continued a powerful work through his life right so why are we talking about it when there is nothing if there is faith god can manifest his glory we may say god i have nothing to hold on to no problem do you have faith in that situation george miller had only faith in god nobody can help me i have to feed the children lord you do a miracle and god did a mighty miracle so faith is the key we say what's going to unlock the the power of god in our lives use the key faith is the key that's the only key we have you know put the key unlock the glory of god into our lives we must carry faith where is faith going to come from from the sky and fly and come sit on us yeah from the word of god so as we are taking time here we are spending time in god's word let's expect for faith to rise up uh, and you know to hold on to those keys unlock the glory of god situation after situation circumstance after circumstance right and uh, see god doing the impossible in our lives all right so i'm just going to stop here because we've run out of time i'm sure each of you has your own personal stories of uh, how you believed god and you know god came through for you i have my set of stories but we've learned that in those circumstances it was only faith amen yes yes sir uh, jesus clearly knows that a uh, son of god will be uh, died on the cross and third day he will rose again but on the cross why he said my lord my lord why you have forsaken me okay my lord my lord why have you forsaken me so you know we we know that he carried the sin of the world on himself right he took our sins and he was nailed to the cross first peter 224 the sin which was upon him um we we know that god is against against sin and uh, god definitely will turn away from sin so when the sin of the world was on jesus so it was a moment of being forsaken by the father not because jesus sin but because he carried the sins of the world there was a momentary separation from the father you got it so which is why he said why have you forsaken me but anyway it the story didn't end there we know that he he carried our sins he paid the ransom price the whole point was for the lamb to be sacrificed which happened jesus behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world so when he died the sins were paid for and he rose up again because death could not hold him so he overcame uh, but that was a momentary separation which is why he said why have you forsaken me all right okay so we we are going to stop right here uh, let me pray quickly yeah let's pray 
Abba Father, we thank you for the truth of your word that refreshes us, Father God. And uh, Lord, uh, you are giving us, Lord, the keys we need, uh, O oh God, to uh, overcome and uh, position ourselves, O oh God, in the fullness uh, of what you are calling us to do. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are uh, equipping us, preparing us, filling our hearts, Lord, with hope and great desire, uh, Lord, to live for you. Uh, Father, we speak blessings upon every single person who's connected to um, the session, Father God, and their families. Lord, let them experience the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. You can go ahead for your break.